Yeah. It ain't wrong, wrong. We gonna hop on in. Cooling waters over here. Right back in. Can we start out just by giving God a big cup of praise? Just, just for the simple fact that He woke us up this morning and He started us on our way. God is faithful. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And um, today is one of the most amazing days of the year. It's Father's Day. Amen. 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 So, so to all the amazing fathers, we, we wish you a happy Father's Day. Uh, we pray that you are handling your responsibility and that you are worthy of being called a father. You know, so um, there are so many uh, biblical examples of, of great fathers, and we're just going to scratch the surface of a, a few scriptures today, just so that we can be reminded of God, that God sets the standard for fatherhood, not the not the world, not other people and other people. God sets the standard. So uh, we're going to go ahead and hop into prayer, so we can hop into this word, so we can hop into our air-conditioned cars. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so just, just, just bear. I hope you wore deodorant. Amen. <laughs> Is it, it, everybody sure? Amen. Sure. Amen. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're sure. Amen. So uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for another amazing day. I think sometimes conditions like this remind us of how blessed we really are. Because somebody slept in an empty, vacant house last night. Same weather, same conditions, same heat, and they have learned to endure uh, any type of circumstance. This right here is temporary for, for us because at the moment we walk out of these doors and start our, our vehicles, God, the air comes on. Uh, some people are walking, but however, we give you praise for whatever our circumstances are. The Apostle Paul says, I have learned to be content in whatever circumstance I am in. He says he's learned how to live with a lot, and he's learned how to live with much less. And I pray that you would help us to find the medium balance, God, because sometimes we, we do forget how well we do have it. And in circumstances like this, like coming into a church that's hot and having to wait for the air, to, this is just us with the fast food mentality. We want it now, turn the air on, cool off immediately. And sometimes, Lord, you are teaching us things in circumstances like this, so we'll make the best of it. But in the midst of it, we're still gonna give you praise. We're still gonna give you honor because we're breathing. No funeral home rolled us in here. We walked in on our own and prayerfully we'll walk out on our own. We intentionally came to give you praise, to lift you up, to say how worthy uh, you are and how grateful we are to be a part of your kingdom agenda. And so we pray that you have your way today, that you give us a word to remind us of what fatherhood is about, and uh, we'll be careful to give you all the praise. We even pray for the fathers who have not learned how to be fathers. We pray and we speak life into them, God, because our children need their fathers. And that's apparent about how and the direction that the world is going today. Fathers are necessary, not just bringing kids into the world, but raising them and training them in the way that they should go so that even when they're old, they won't depart from that way. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So once again, uh, Amen. Give God praise. Y'all, y'all will be praised. Okay, so we know that um, today is Father's Day, and you can tell by the direction of the world that fathers need to be reminded to be fathers, right? Amen. Uh, we can tell by uh, the direction that many of our kids are taking uh, that they are fatherless. And we, we give credit to a lot of mothers for stepping in, not being a father to their children, but being an even more amazing mother. Because a, a, a woman cannot be a father. 
You know, I, I, I disagree with the statement. I don't really make a big deal about it because some, I've heard a lot of women utter that I'm the mother and the father. You can't be a mother and a father. It's just not possible. But you can be the best mother that you can possibly be. And so we thank you for stepping in the gap and for doing what many of us men have failed to do. Uh, and we also give God praise for all of the amazing fathers in this world because there are a bunch of amazing fathers who raise their children, who's in the household, even those outside of the household. It, it doesn't matter, they take care of their responsibility. Nobody should have to ask a man or a woman to take care of what they help bring into the world. Am I right about that? Amen. Amen. It's an honor to be able to raise your own children. Yeah. And on top of that, if you do an amazing job raising your children, you have to also be reminded that one day they will be raising you. Yeah. And so you have to be careful how you treat your children as you raise them, because one day you might be going into a nursing home, or one day you might be going somewhere, and you're going to need to be uh, tended to by somebody who loves you. Because if you're not tended to by somebody who loves you, then the world will take advantage of you. Because there are people who work in these places for a paycheck. They don't have the heart. You know, they don't love what they do and they don't love people. And so to, play, to be placed in one of those type of environments and conditions because you didn't raise your children, because you were not there for them, you know, that, that can really turn on you. You know, and I also tell people um, who say, well, I, I didn't have a mother, she wasn't there, or a father he wasn't there. And I, I, this is what I say to that. If they did nothing else for you, they got you here. Amen. They got you here, you're alive, you're well, and it's up to you to make the best of what you do have. Amen? Amen. And so I want to jump right into some scriptures today. Um, we're going to be here probably about 30 more minutes. And I want to talk, uh, I want you to turn to Ephesians, and let's just see what the Word of God has to say about family in general. Let's see what the Word has to say. And, and this is a, a, a tough day for me. I saw my dad's twin uh, for the first time in a long time yesterday, and it, it did something to me because uh, there were things about his twin that my dad does, you know, they're identical. So um, when I looked at him, I just immediately saw my dad and the, the mannerisms and all that stuff. But I, I'm okay, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, I would have loved to call him to say Happy Father's Day. You know, even though he wasn't the best father, he was still my father, you know, so, uh, and, and it's all good if he would have called me by now. You know, but um, however, God is a father who will never leave you and he will never forsake you. Ephesians chapter 6, I want you to look with me. And I want to see, I want you to see the dynamics of the family and see how God set things up as it relates to uh, fatherhood, motherhood, and childhood. There, there are three different uh, aspects to this text. And we're going to try to get to it real quick. Uh, chapter 6, verse 1. Listen to what it says. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Okay? So not only does the mother and the father have a responsibility, but also the children have a responsibility. What is their responsibility? To respect your parents. Whether they are good parents, bad parents, it, it, it doesn't matter. You respect the parents that God gave you. You didn't choose them. God chose them for you. And regardless of their lifestyle, regardless of their mindset, regardless of their choices in life, God has, has placed a responsibility on you to obey your parents. Obey is another word for honor. Honor your mother and your father. You know, to the best of your ability. But on the flip side of that, some children have never learned how to honor because they've never seen it. Hello, somebody. If they see you honor your parents, then maybe they'll have a picture of what it looks like 
and they can mimic what they see because most kids are going to do that anyway. They're going to mimic what they see. They see you disrespect your parents, and then next thing you know, you're being disrespected. I'm not saying that that's always how it happens because I know a lot of amazing parents who are always being disrespected by their ungrateful children. Ungrateful. You have the world at your feet, and you choose to disrespect a parent, your parents, that everybody else respects. That don't make sense to me. Somebody has to make this make sense to me. How does everybody else honor and respect your parents more than you? Something is truly wrong with that. I'm not saying that we always get it right because we all sin and we all fall short and sometimes we, we make bad decisions. But at the end of the day, you have to know that dishonoring your parents comes with a consequence. It comes, with a, it comes with a dire consequence. And sometimes it can cut your day short. And we see a lot of these young people out here being gunned down and dying at very young ages. And we wonder, what's going on? Well, let me tell you what's going on. God takes honoring your parents very serious. I don't see how some of you, I don't see how a woman can be with a man who calls his mother out of her name. You, and you think he's getting ready to treat you like a queen? Your first queen is your mama. Yes, sir. Somebody help me out. Yes, sir. That's your first queen. And then you can, if you can treat your mother like a queen, then it, it becomes easier for you to treat other women yes, like a queen. But children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is what? It's the right thing to do. Why should I honor my mom? She never. It's the right thing to do. But she's always with her man. And she, it's the right thing to do. But she is the right thing to do. You don't have to like every decision your mother or father makes. But at the end of the day, the Bible says, if you want it to go well with you, then you need to yeah, you need to honor. You know, when you get a certain age, you ain't gonna obey and go, nah, I'm grown. So don't, we can't take it out of context, you know, but being raised as a young person by your parents, of course you, you obey them until you get of age and then you can make your own decisions independent of your parents. And then second, verse number two says what? Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment Y'all see that? It's a command. First commandment. With what? There's something attached to it. It's a promise. What is that promise? So that it may go well with you. Y'all see it? Look at people who honor their parents and look at their life. There's a big difference. There's a lot of good things going on. Is their life perfect? No. Do they still have issues? Yes. But guess what? God is going to work that out for their good. When you honor your father and your mother, it comes with a price. If you dishonor them, it comes with a price. There is something attached to the promise. Let's look at it. It says, so that it may be well with you. You want to be well in your life? You want to be well with you? Some of you, are, I think you honor your mother, right? Yes, sir. Uh, that's why things are going well with you. You know? The people that I see are people who honor their parents. And guess what? Your life ain't the worst. When you go out of your way, especially to honor a parent who never showed you honor, to honor a parent who never really done their due diligence as a parent and you still go out of your way because you feel that it is your duty and your obligation because God has put you in a better position to do it, that's called honor. It's easy to honor somebody who honors you. It's hard to honor somebody where honor ain't come, where, when it ain't coming back to you, when it ain't being reciprocated. And so it really measures your growth when you can do what is not being done to you. So, 
And then this is where when the latter part, verse 3 says, so that it may go well with you, that you may live long, what? On the earth. And so when you see these young people out here cursing their parents out, calling them all kind of B's and H's and everything else that can fly out of their mouths, just know it won't last long. It will not last long. Your, your, your daughter, your grandson, granddaughter is out there dishonoring, no, no right from wrong. Being raised right, but you're just gonna get out here and let people send you out, man, you talking crazy. To the person that birthed you, that raised you, that made sure you had everything that you needed, and, and this is what they get in return? Oh, you better watch out. You better watch out. When some of these dudes out here get caught up in these drive-bys and get caught up in this lifestyle, get caught up and then end up in the morgue, and we be like, man, dang, what happened? See, we, we think that everything is just beef in the street. Some of this stuff is, is scripturally tied in. We just jump over what God said because there's a whole lot of people who have been beefing in this world. They ain't died like that. They know how to honor their mother, their father. They know how to honor God. Every, every now and then, people do have a brawl. It's, it, it, it's a part of life. But you don't think that some of these deaths that we've seen is connected to this dishonor right here? When he tells you that if you do what is right, it will be well with you and you will live longer? I'm hoping God keeps me here for a long, long time. Mama, anything I said or done, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 man. Yeah. Let, let me start honoring today. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying that it's not too late to go back and get it right. Because when you know better, you what? Do better. You, you do better. You at least give extra effort. Lord, I'm struggling in this area. I'm struggling because I had a deadbeat father. I had a deadbeat mother. I had somebody who was raising somebody else's kids, and I'm right here in need. You know, it, it's hard to give them honor and respect when they never saw you. You know what I mean? When I say see you, I mean see you, acknowledge you, and become a part of your world. And then he jumps down to verse 4, and he says, Father. Somebody say fathers. Fathers. Do not provoke your children to anger. Did y'all see that? Yes, sir. Do not provoke your children to anger. Now, let me just tell you, a father can provoke the children to anger and so can a mother. But this right here is specifically to the fathers. The one who's supposed to be the head of the house. The one who's supposed to be leading the family. And you have to give honor to women these days. And some men get mad. Uh, some men get mad about it. Because why are we sharing our platform with women today? Because guess what? They deserve it. They deserve it. Because if nobody else is going to step in, a woman is. Hello, somebody. I was raised by a single mother who had four. So I know what it looks like, you know, to have a strong mother to stand in the gap and to make sure that you have everything that you need while the father is out having a good time, enjoying the life. And you know what? When a mother brings a child into the world, she's stuck with the child really more than the father. I, I'm just using the term stuck. Because a lot of times she doesn't have an option to pass the baby to the father. If he says, no, I'm busy, I got this and that to do, guess what? When she want to go somewhere to a cookout, guess who she has with her? The baby, the stroller, the car seat. That's why we honor women too. Not as being another father, but just being a very supportive mother. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. What does the word provoke mean? It means to agitate. 
It means to agitate. And let me just give you this example here. I used to be so agitated as a young man. You know why I was so agitated? I was agitated and I feel like I was provoked because I saw other young men with their dads. I saw it. And every time I saw it, it was just something in me that, that triggered. It was a trigger for me because I wanted what they had. In a sense, of course, I was younger, a sense of jealousy. I didn't understand or, or envy. I, you know, when you long for something that somebody else has and you don't get it, it just builds up resentment, it builds up anger, and then you start becoming this person that your anger is pushing you to, and next thing you know, people don't like you, you don't like yourself. And it takes a long time sometimes to undo something that has been put in you because you were provoked. And so I talk to a lot of young men who are angry. Man, what's wrong with you, young man? You got your whole life ahead of you. And then when you narrow everything down, the boy missing his dad, or the young lady is missing her dad. And so fathers, don't provoke your children to, to anger. But the Bible says, bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And so if you don't know God, then it might be a long time before your children get to know him. Amen. Amen. I say, if you don't get to know him, it's going to be a long time before your kids get to know him. Somebody has to instill it. Somebody has to put the seed in their heart that there is a God. Look at this world that we're living in where people don't honor and respect God. I was talking to a pastor yesterday, and uh, he ran into one of my old church members, and uh, he asked him, uh, do they still go to, to our church? And uh, she said, I don't go to church no more. I don't go to church no more. So all that shouting and jumping and praising God was fake. What you mean? You, what, what you mean? You know, but, but listen, I understand that things do happen in churches, people. But I, we should still be trying to run to God. If one thing don't work out for you, let me find something that's going to work for me. And it's okay because you're grown and you can make your own choices. But you need to find yourself in the house of the Lord. Everybody can worship from their own house. I don't care what nobody said. Well, I can worship God in the house. You, you can't even interpret scripture. How are you going to learn and grow if nobody is teaching you? And you can only teach yourself so much. You know, and then when you're in this type of environment, you're in an environment where everybody is going through something. You're not going through it by yourself. I don't care how many smiles I see. I don't care how well you look. At the end of the day, you got to look in that mirror. You got to look in that mirror and you got to accept your flaws. You got to see them. You got to see yourself for who you really are. And you got to deal with you. And guess what? Sometimes you need somebody to give you a word to help you deal with that. And so I'm going to move on. In Proverbs 22, 6, I got a couple more scriptures out after this one. It says, a train your child in the way he should go. Okay? Should go. Train them. Show them the way that they should go. It didn't say, um, it didn't say just tell them. When you train people, you show them how to do it. Right? Right. And then when they get older, they'll never be able to say, I didn't know. They'll never be able to say that. Why? Because I'll show you. And you know, it's like riding a bike. No matter how long you haven't ridden one, once you learn how to ride it, it won't take you long to work, to pick back up. That's how it is with training a child. Sometimes you when you train them and you show them the way, you keep on showing them the way, you keep on showing them the way, and then it gets embedded 
and it becomes a part of who they are. And when they get off track, you don't even have to say nothing because guess what? And I know I'm not the only one that you can still hear your parent's voice in your head and in your heart and in your mind when you're doing something. You know what they would have said to you, right? And so when you got that type of, of training, you got a parent that's, you remember them talks that you've had with your parents, that takes you a long way. I, I can remember my grandmother, I was sitting on the porch on 12th Street. I was sitting on her porch and she always told me that the street life was not for me. My grandmama always told me that. She knew that I was trying to be something that I wasn't. And you know what? She had the guts to tell me. She was like, Mama, that's what she used to call me, Mama, this life ain't for you. I remember it like it was yesterday. And you know, all the times I was trying to be in them streets, I would always hear my grandmother's voice. And even as an adult, I've been out the street for a long time, but guess what? I still remember what my grandmama said. And so when you learn how to honor the people who love you, to honor the people that God has placed in your life, and they speak to you, it carries weight. And so when you're training your child, you're teaching them principles, and you're teaching them morals, and you're teaching them that if they don't have to be like everybody else. You're, you're unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. There's nobody like you. Nobody acts like you. They can try to imitate you, but they'll never be able to duplicate you. Amen. You're unique, and you need to accept your own uniqueness. But train your child in the way that he should go, and even when they're old, they will not depart. And then Psalm 103, verse 13 says, As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who, what, fear him. Do you know what it, when Jesus went through Jerusalem, and he was healing all of those people, the Bible always said that he was moved with compassion. Psalm 103, verse 13. You got to have compassion for your children. You know what will make a child angry? You never spending time with them. You spending time with everybody else but me. And let me just give a shout out to all the grandparents. That's more of a parent than their children are to your grandchildren. You should be able to enjoy your life not having to make it an obligation for you to take care of your grandchildren. And guess what? It ain't always something you did. When these folk get grown, they make their own choices. And you don't, and I, listen, I feel so bad for so many grandparents who don't have a choice. You can send them to the home and let them to foster care, or you can inconvenience yourself, put your life on hold, and make sure that they have the life that they deserve. That is a hard decision, especially when you've already done your part as a and you trained your child right, you gave them the world, you made them be responsible, and then they wait till they get good and grown to get good and ignorant. Mm -hmm. Y'all didn't hear me. Yeah. Yeah. I said, I said they wait till they get good and grown, bringing kids into the world, and then they get good and ignorant. Mm -hmm. Just straight ignorant. And you think that your life is gonna go well when you just dropping your child off on anybody who will keep them, and you think you're gonna go out here and just, just live your life up, baby, there's some other stuff attached to that that you just don't see. And if you keep on, because I believe that God gives people time to turn around. You know, when you're going the wrong way, every now and then you see a U-turn sign, yeah, that means that there is an opportunity here for you to get back on track. The problem is that some people see that U-turn sign and know they need to turn around. But you know what? They're going to keep on going their way. And they're going to get further and further away from the path that they need to be on because they're stubborn. I'm going to show you I'm wrong. I'm going to do my own thing. And guess what? You fall right into that trap because you just don't want to see the grandbabies 
I see it every single day. I hear it all the time. It's like people today just have babies and be like, here, mama. Because you ain't taking them to your daddy. You take them straight to your mama and dropping them off. And then I'll see y'all when I get back. And Lord forbid, and she said, I ain't keeping them. Now you ain't never did nothing for me. You, you this, you that. Just disrespectful. Just disres quite disrespectful. And you think that is going to go well for you? And, and, and let me just put a pen right here. And the first person you call when you get snatched up. And the first person you call. And see, I believe that this is how it worked for me. If somebody called me and said my son was doing this and, I, and, and want me to step in and, and, you know, mediate or whatever, intervene, my son going to look at me and I already know what's up. My, and he's 29 years old. He ain't going to disrespect me. You know what I'm saying? And even if he tried, he ain't going to get too far. He know that. And, that, and, and sometimes that's the type of relationship that you have to have with your children, that when they see your eyes, then they know when you plan and when you're not. And see, some parents don't have that type of relationship with their, with their children. Now, you think I'm always playing. You think you can keep on talking. No, that ain't, it ain't going to fly with me. It ain't going to fly the first time. See, when you let that jump fly the first time, and the second time, the third time, then they just keep on, and guess what? It gets worse. Yes, I'm not going to bring no child into this world and let them disrespect me. I will drag you up every block. <laughs> I'm telling you, and I don't care how old you are or how old you think I am. You're going to have to bring your A game with me. And it, even if you are a child in my family and I'm around, I don't care who your mom or your daddy is. You're not disrespecting nobody around me in my, no. And then they try, and then, you know, some of these parents are so silly. I don't know why he even got in. Because you didn't do nothing. And you wasn't being the only one, you wasn't the only one being disrespected. When they disrespect you in front of us, we all disrespect you. It used to be where a village can step in and help you raise your kids. Now, these kids be talking crazy to teachers and everybody, and then a the parent go over there, and now you want to smack the teacher. But not one time have you smacked your disrespectful child. I don't understand that. And then your child, the freshest one in school, got all the J's, got all the clothes, got all the uh, Valabasas jeans. You want your child to look good, but you don't want them to be good? There's something wrong with that. And that's why I said a lot of these children need their fathers to step in, not to be their friend, not to be their homie. Not to go show them off because you bought them something. But to step in and be like, look, I need you to get your education. I need you to be respectful. And I need you to know that I'm on the teacher's side. I need you to know that I'm on your side when you're right. You have to help bring balance to these children. I know this one young man got into it. He was 100% wrong. When he told his dad, daddy don't even know the story. And you coming over trying to check somebody. And that's how people go to the grave fast. When, listen people, we have to do better. God has given us everything that we need that will help us be the people that we need to be. We just need to, to read. Here it is right here. This is a roadmap. Unfortunately, some people have dropped this. They put it down. They don't pick it up until it's time to come in here. And some people don't even do it then. So we have to be careful. And I got one more scripture and then we're out of here. Colossians 3 and 21. Fathers. It says, fathers, do not embitter 
your children or they will be discouraged. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they will be discouraged. And you know, discouragement can lead to disaster. We have to be responsible. We have to make sure that we form a relationship with our children. You know, because the scripture tells us that how we move affects them. And we definitely don't want to be a negative impact on our children's lives. And so once again, we applaud, and I know a lot of amazing fathers, we applaud you for being a good father, but we're also praying for those who are absent to be present, not just showing up, but to, to learn something that you can pass on to your children, because a lot of us ain't passing no money to them. Amen. But there are some things that are worth way more than money. And you know what it is? Wisdom. Solomon said if he had the choice to choose anything, he would choose wisdom over money. Because when you got wisdom, you can get money. You can have money and no wisdom and be broke. Because you don't know how to spend it, you don't know how to save, you don't know how to put it away, you don't know how to invest it. But if you got wisdom, you can t turn a dollar into a hundred, a hundred into a thousand, a thousand into whatever. It's up to you. And so, once again, happy Father's Day. And saying this in closing, thank you mothers for helping us and pushing us to be the best fathers that we can. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand of today without giving God honor for being such an amazing father to his son Jesus. Everything that Jesus needed, the father provided. He allowed Jesus to go through pain, suffering, he allowed him to die, but on the third day he resurrected him and all power was put in his hands. And so uh, because Jesus rose, we have the ability to get up. There's nothing that can actually hold us down. Nothing but us. Nothing but ourselves. My old pastor used to say, you are your own worst enemy. There's nobody else. And so um, I pray that this, the rest of this day be the best of your days. Amen? Let's pray. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for every person here. We thank you for helping us to navigate the heat. Uh, we know that that's temporary. Somebody has gone to hell and they're there forever. Thank God for your grace today. Thank God for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and all that you're going to do. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to reverse some things. We don't always get it right, but we thank you for every U-turn. We thank you for every moment you give us, Lord, to get back on track, to, to realize, Lord, that you see everything and you're actually setting us up to be the best version of ourselves. Thank you for the grandparents who are sometimes better than the real parents. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for people who know how to step into the gap and to assist and to be a blessing and to put their lives to the side for the sake of raising another. God, we know that's, that's called honor and love. There's nothing like love. It's a powerful word. And it's not only spoken, but love is an action. And we thank you for those who are putting forth the action. Now, Father, I pray for those uh, fathers who have never seen a good father. I pray, God, that you would allow them to cross paths with somebody who can show them that it's not too late for them to fix what is broken. We love you. We thank you for all you've done, all that you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let us stand.
Turn to your neighbor and say, we made it. take over my house. Y'all just put me out. Every time you come, I gotta go sleep in the other room. Y'all be putting me out of my room, huh? <laughs> um, are there any special prayer requests this morning? Father, we honor you. We come to you collectively. Pray for Minister Teresa's son. You know what happened. You know all the details. And we just ask that justice will prevail. Have your way. We pray not only for justice, we also pray, as she mentioned, for her son's mental illness. Whatever he needs, God, we know that you are still a healer and that there is nothing too hard for you. God, the Bible teaches us where two or three are gathered in your name, that you would be in the midst of us and we can ask anything in your name and you would give it to us. So we trust you even when we don't trace you. I believe that there are some unspoken requests that need to be lifted up right now, God, and we lift them up to you because we know that you are a God who still hears. God, we know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. And we know that you have the power to break strongholds. You have the power, Lord, to loose the hand of the enemy. You have the power to provide everything that we need mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially. And so I pray that every need be met today, God. I pray that when we leave this place, that we would just start walking into blessings, God. I pray that you open up the window of heaven and pour us out blessings so we don't have enough room to receive them. I pray that our cups will begin to run over, God. I pray that you would give us enough for us and enough to share. I pray, God, that you would just do what no man or woman can do for us, God. I pray that you would help us to keep you first and foremost in our lives. We don't want you to be a co-pilot, God. We want you to remain the pilot. And so if you want to turn the vehicle around, if you want to make a left or a right, if you want to halt the vehicle, God, have your way. Because we know that whatever you do is going to be in our best interest, God. And I also pray that you would forgive us of our sins because we've fallen short of the glory of God. We've done things our way. We've, we, we've chosen our own path at times, God. And I just pray right now, God, that you forgive us for being stubborn, God. Because sometimes that stubborn demon will come up in us, God, and it'll keep us from receiving blessings, God. It'll keep us off your path, God. It'll keep us in the wrong mindset, God. And I just pray for healing right now for all of your people. I pray for every pastor who's standing in the gap. I pray for every deacon. I pray for every parishioner. I pray for every unsaved individual, God, that you would begin to draw them unto yourself because the Bible says that no man can come to the Father except you draw them, God. And I know that you are still working, God. And I know that you are still drawing people. And I know that you are still saving people. And I know that you are still restoring people people, God, because you're still on the throne, and we give you praise, God, because you alone are worthy of all the praise, the honor, and the glory, God. We lift you up, because we know that as you be lifted from this earth, that you will begin to draw all men unto yourself. I pray that you will break that 
that spirit off of the fathers who feel that they don't need to be in their children's lives, who leave the responsibility to the children to reach out to them, God. I pray, God, that you would help us to step up to the plate. I pray that you would help us to pour into our children, not pausing, but healing, God. I pray that you would just have your way and that you would change the dynamics of how we move, God. I pray that you would just, just have your way. Do what you know is the best thing to do. Help us, God, to be more sensitive to your still, small voice. And the world will get better, one person at a time. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 I want to extend an invitation. If you don't know Christ today as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to give you the opportunity to get to know him. Because tomorrow is a promise to anybody. The next breath is a promise to you. So if you don't know him, I'm talking about it in a, a for real way, because the Bible says in the last days that people will wax worse and worse. That means that people ain't going to, they're going to get more and more devious. You're going to see more and more evilness. The Bible says in the last days, you're going to see it. Don't be surprised. You know, so if, if you don't know him, you, you got to know him. Because you, you can't win this battle on your own. When the Bible says that the battle doesn't belong to you, it belongs to the Lord. Yeah, that's one of them battles. You want God to go before you. I don't ever want to be in the midst of a war with no protection. God is your protector. He's your shield. He's your buckler. He's everything that you need. Yeah. Okay, if our hearts and minds are clear, I'm glad that everybody is good and saved sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I still believe in the Holy Spirit. I still believe that God moves at the counsel of his own will. I still believe that God can snap his fingers and fix your whole life. I, I believe that. I believe that God can change your financial situation overnight. He can. It ha it's happening for somebody even right now while we're talking. They woke up broke and something happened. And now they'll never have to worry about another dollar for the rest of their lives. You know, so that's the type of God that we serve. And you got to continue to trust him and live every day with expectancy. I expect God. And some of, some, some of you, like you don't boast and you don't brag, you don't really put it out there, but I know you. And I know why you're able to do what you do because of your attitude toward God and your attitude toward God's people. There is no way that God is not going to bless you beyond measure. He, he has to bless you. But Jacob said, I ain't leaving until you bless me. Amen. And a lot of us are like that. We're holding on, God. I can't let you go. I don't care if you got to change my walk. I don't care if you got to change my talk. I don't care what you got to do. I ain't letting you go until you bless me. Amen. All right, so... Um, as we prepare to leave this place, I want those of you who are going to give, there are three different methods to give. You can cash at Inner Peace Church. You can, uh, I'm sure Tab will still drop the uh, link in the comments to give online. Uh, and there's another number that you can text. It's 301-5545. You can text give to that number and uh, give as the Lord leads you to give. We don't ever want you to do anything that God didn't put on your heart to do. We need it to be sincere. We need it to be real. Amen. Because the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. And if you can't give that way, then you got to keep it. I mean, you don't have to, but it ain't going to do nothing for you. God loves a cheerful giver. When you give it, you want to do it. Amen. And not because some pastor is twisting your arm and telling you to give more. You didn't give enough. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We ain't tricking nobody out of nothing. We just want you to give according to how God works on your heart. Amen. Because we all have a personal relationship with God. You hear him. Amen. Well, let's pray. We're getting out of here. Father, as we prepare to leave this place and never your presence, we pray that the grace of God and the sweet abiding communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule in the Bible with each of us, now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you all.